All right, so welcome back. And today what we're gonna do is a video that's very similar to another video that I did a few weeks ago called Super Quick Python Automation Ideas. And what I did in that video was go through basically ideas for things you could automate with Python. And a lot of you seem to like that. And what I wanna do in this video is go through just general project ideas for Python. So not focused on automation, but just general projects that you could try that would be fun to kind of do over a weekend or something like that and uh, also what I did in that video is something that I would consider more beginner type uh, projects and what I wanted to do in this one is more towards the intermediate level or that's that's kind of what I've tried to do in this video at least the whole purpose of this video is really just to get you excited to code and to work on your own projects hopefully it'll also give you some ideas for some projects to try out and maybe one of these ideas will be something that you get super excited about and that you want to code straight away. But maybe it will just be that one of these ideas ignites or lights a little spark in your head for a different idea and a different project that you're super excited about and that you want to work on. I can kind of see like either scenario playing out. I personally really love to just watch other people code and that really inspires me and I can kind of derive different ideas for new projects that I want to do from those sort of videos. So that's kind of what I want this video to be for you. And what I'll do also is I'll leave links in the description to all of the GitHub repositories for all the different projects that I'll mention. And what we're going to go through is three different ideas for different projects to try. So let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to mention that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes in different topics like business, programming, productivity, and much more. And it's only $10 a month. And if you sign up using the link that I've added in the description, then you get a two month free trial. The funny thing is that when they contacted me, I started signing up for their service. And then I got completely lost on step two out of three on the signup process. And I'd already heard of Skillshare, so I was pretty confident that it was a good service. And I've seen tons of huge YouTubers promoting it and like create their own classes on there. So I was pretty confident in it. So honestly, at this point, my idea was just to save three classes, watch some of them, and then make sure that the quality was good to promote them on this channel. But what ended up happening is I just kept scrolling through that page and saving class after class after class. And they ask you to save three classes, but I ended up saving 53 freaking classes. And the only reason that I stopped was just because I'd spent like 40 minutes scrolling through that page. So I have no idea how I'm gonna have time to actually watch all of these classes, but I'll have to make sure to do it somehow because I'm really excited about it. So therefore, even if this doesn't sound like it's something for you, please just go to the link in the description and sign up. You get two months free and you will get lost just like I did, just picking the classes that you wanna take. I love to learn things, so I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was definitely surprised by how excited I got for this. So just do it, just sign up, link in the description. All right, so the first idea is to create a script that will store secret files for us. And we'll store these files using a SQLite database. And essentially what the idea is, is just that if you have any secret files on your computer that you don't want anyone to see, then you can store them in this like password protected database. And I think this is a really good idea for a project because most databases today use SQL. And therefore I think this project will be a, like a perfect opportunity to kind of practice working with SQL and Python. So that's the first idea. Now, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you now kind of how my script ended up working. 
So if we run this, it will first ask you what is your password. If you type in the wrong thing, then it will ask you again. And I set the password to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we get into the database. And if you don't have a database, it will create a database for you. And then it will ask you what do you want to store in it today. And then it will list all the commands that you can type in. So we can type in Q and that will quit the program. We can type in O and that will open a file. And we type, can type in S and that will store a file. What we want to start with is we're going to try to store an image. So I've added an image here to the desktop. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to store that in the database. And then we're going to delete this from the desktop so that it essentially doesn't exist anymore on my computer except for in this database. And then we're going to try to retrieve the image from that database. Uh, and that will then be the script working. So we're going to press type in S for store a file. And then it prompts you to enter the full path to the file that you want to store. I know that mine is on the desktop. So we're going to type in the desktop uh, direct path. And it's called image image.jpg. And hopefully this then has stored this image for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the image. We're going to put it in the trash. Then we're going to empty uh, the trash like so. So now the trash is empty. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to open this file. So what should happen now is if we try to open it, it should add a new file here called image.jpg. And that should then be our image. So uh, let's try this. O. And what is the file type of the file you want to open? It is a JPEG. And what is the name of the file that you want to open? It's called image. So now this should open the right file for us. So as you can see, it added an image or added a file here called image.jpg. If you press this, we get our image. So that is essentially how this script will work and how our uh, safe will work to store our secret files. And so I'm really happy because this actually worked out. So this that means that this script works and our database works and it stores our secret files for us. Uh, so that means that idea number one is done. All right, so the second idea here is gonna be a little bit more complicated to explain, but I'll give it a try. Uh, what it is is going to be a script that we can call within a directory and what it will do is then list all of the subdirectories and all of the files within those subdirectories in a particular way so that we can kind of get an overview of uh, all of the files and all of the directories that are within that directory if that makes sense. Um, so that would look something like this. So the end product I think will be really useful. So I think it's a really interesting project to kind of work on. And for a little bit of like added extra spice or extra challenge, what you can do is you can try to implement recursion. So what I did was I recursively looked through all the different directories and all the different files. So uh, for a little bit of added extra challenge, you can try to practice your recursion. Okay, sounds good, let's do it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how the script for listing all the directories and subdirectories and files and all that, how it actually ended up working. So essentially what this script will do is it will list all of the directories and subdirectories and files within the folder that the script is being run in. So right now this script is being run in this folder called directory tree, which means it will only list all of the folders and files within that directory. So let's just run it and then I'll go through kind of uh, what it all means. All right, so let's run that. Okay, so what we get now is uh, showdears.py, which is this file right here. And that is within that directory, so that's good. And then it lists the folder, that is this one. And then it lists the sub folders as well. So as of right now, this script only lists the directories and subdirectories of the folder that it's being run from. 
And one like simple or pretty simple uh, improvement that can be made to this is to add it to the shell script so that you can run it from anywhere. And then also make sure that instead of getting the current working directory, which we're getting up here, you can make sure that it gets the directory from where the file is being run. So essentially then you could go to like desktop and you can run it there and it will list all the subdirectories and all that stuff from there. Or you could go to your documents and it will list it in there instead. Because right now it's kind of limited to the folder that it's in or to the location of the actual script. So right now, if you would want to do this in a different location, then you would have to move the script to that folder and then run it from there, uh, which is a bit of a hassle. So I definitely recommend if an improvement on this would be to add it to the shell script and uh, then change this so that you actually get uh, the directory that it's being run from. But that is idea number two, done and dusted. All right, so the third and final idea is gonna to be to create a password manager. And if you don't know what a password manager is, it's essentially like a database where you store all your different passwords. And what you have is like a master password that you remember, and you type that in, and then you get access to all your different passwords. Essentially, that's how it works. What my script will do is we will have a master password as well. Uh, we will get access into the database, and then we can just type in the name of the service so let's say that it's YouTube, we type in YouTube and then we get back our password for YouTube. And the reason for using a password manager is essentially you don't have to remember all your passwords. You only have to remember the master password and then you can get all of your passwords from the database. This also means that you can have a lot safer passwords. You can have way longer passwords because you don't have to remember them yourself and you can also have different passwords for each site, which can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. Uh, and I wanted to be wanted to work on something like this for a while now. So I figured this was like a perfect opportunity to kind of work on this. And this will again, allow us to practice a little bit more using SQL and also hashing for creating the passwords. And in general, it's just a really fun project to do. So here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how this all worked out. Uh, this one is actually pretty similar to the first idea that I showed you. So we're gonna run it and then I'm gonna go through kind of how it works. So first it'll ask, what is your password? One, two, three, four, five, six is my password. And then it will create the save for us if we don't have one already. And then it'll ask, what would you like to store in it today? And similar to the first uh, program, I just copied this pretty much. Uh, Q will quit the program, JP will get the password, SP will store the password. So what we want to do is we want to store a password, so we press SP, and then it asks you what is the name of the service, let's say that it's YouTube. Then what it will do is it will create a password for us here. Right now I put it to be 15 characters, but you could have it be like 100 characters or whatever you want really. Uh, I don't know if there's like some services might have limits to how many characters you can use, but this is a really useful program because this way you can store super, you can create super safe passwords and you can store them. You don't have to remember them yourself. Uh, the only problem uh, with this one is that it's kind of limited to your computer. So one thing that you could do to improve this even more would be to create like a web service or something like that for this so that you can also access your passwords from your phone. But anyway, it's a really great project to work on. It's, uh, there's a lot of fun things to be, do to be done here and I really enjoyed it. So that is the final idea done. Okay, so those are my three super quick Python project ideas for you to try. And I really hope that you got some new ideas out of this video for new projects that you can get really excited about. I really think that personal projects is just the best way to learn. And I also think it's the most fun way to learn. 
I love when I come up with a new idea and I just get super excited about it and I just want to spend the entire weekend coding it. So if I was able to bring that to one of you guys, then I'm super happy with the outcome of this video. That's essentially the goal of this video. So if you do end up doing this, then please feel free to leave a link to your GitHub repository in the comments because I would love to check that out, but it's not only for me. I think that a lot of other people would want to check that out as well. And then hopefully you can help inspire someone else with the idea that you came up with, or maybe the improvement that you made to one of my ideas. Like I said, there's a lot of improvement that can be made. Okay, and lastly, before you get going, I just want to mention that I created something called Clean Code Friday, which is a short email that I send out every Friday, so once a week that contains a few of the most interesting things that I've explored or discovered throughout that week. And this will be things like books I'm reading, podcasts I've listened to, coding tips and tricks, articles I've read, productivity tips, and really anything that I think you might enjoy. So if this sounds interesting, then you can sign up by going to caltech.com slash clean code Friday. And there's no spam, I'm not selling anything. Uh, I've really been enjoying it lately and that's, I've been blown away by how many people have signed up. So I hope you sign up and I hope to see you there. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.